Throughout both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, numerous characters are called towards a place of atonement for their past actions. They are asked to move away from habits and trends which have led to destruction, and instead move towards a straight and narrow path. It could be argued that the central theme of each show revolves around the negative impact of dishonesty and how each person attempts to avoid the reality of their situation. Lies are what push characters to a breaking point, and the only way through the crisis is to be more truthful about their current circumstances. Can they view their situation differently so as to provide an opportunity for change? Can they have a crucial insight allowing unconscious contents to be assimilated and assist with better decision making. It's about how individuals become stuck in their ego wishes and desires, creating the inability to approach situations in a less problematic way. Deceiving oneself comes into play in the Breaking Bad storyline, as Walt is unable to see his constant projections onto others consistently placing the blame for his own problems on the external world. Meanwhile, Jesse deals with denial about his past pain and hurt, with equal ignorance regarding his positive qualities, a topic discussed in a previous video. The themes of lying and truth are also pervasive throughout Better Call Saul. Mike is someone who must come to terms with the person he is and the past he has created eventually overcoming his compartmentalization and reaching a place of peace and acceptance by no longer rejecting his opposing parts. Nacho also reaches a point of honesty with himself before dying, understanding the pain and strife he has caused his father due to his selfish behaviors. He is able to make a change by the end in which he begins to see how taking care of his family is a top priority. Howard too comes to a crossroads moment after Chuck's death eventually realizing the need to place value on friendships and community more than the business and profit he previously prioritized. And finally, we have Jimmy and Kim, two characters who have been lying to themselves for much of their lives and who found respite with each other as an escape from reality. Their relationship served the perfect opportunity for each of them to ignore the severity of their ever worsening actions. But despite the mirage of a partnership they created, the end of the series provides the opportunity for each of them to come clean about the past and begin healing. Let's compare and contrast the paths that Jimmy and Kim choose in the second half of season 6, and the ways that lies and truth play a crucial part for each individual's fate. Following Howard's death, Kim and Jimmy are being prompted by Mike about how to handle their approach moving forward. He asks them both to repeat the phrase, It never happened as a way to habituate their concealment of the truth. We see how they are being coerced into fabricating, providing little to no option for them to confess if they desired. But this comes easier for Jimmy than for Kim, and in the following episode he tells her, One day we'll, uh, we'll wake up and brush our teeth and we'll go to work, and at some point we'll suddenly realize that we haven't thought about it at all. None of it. Jimmy is used to suppressing and brushing past events. His history is riddled with ignoring details and traumas, and creating alternate versions in his head of what he think might have happened. He willfully forgets the relevance of happenings, prone to sweeping things under the rug forever, just as he had done with Chuck's death. Kim, on the other hand, has been struggling with Howard's death and isn't as professional as Jimmy when it comes to deception. Her fabrication to Cheryl about Howard's fake addiction is the last straw, necessitating an exit from the mirage. She soon gives up the law, finally seeing how the person she has become does not align with the values she professes as a lawyer. Then when she plans to leave Jimmy, he tries to make her stay by saying they can find a new place we're gonna leave here. We're never ever gonna come back here again. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna put it behind us. Things will look brighter. I guarantee it. Jimmy has been conditioned to this type of approach, robbing him of the ability to feel the internal pressure that is pushing Kim away from the delusion. She can't accept this option, and instead comes clean about the toxicity of their relationship, 
and her guilt for not telling Jimmy that Lalo was still alive. Kim is no longer deceiving herself about how far south things have gone. She sees how her avoidance of hurt and pain has led to disastrous results. She begins her path of redemption, while Jimmy is left to stew in his own misery and build on his mountain of falsehood. Jimmy eventually becomes Gene, and he constructs the department store heist, concurrently deceiving Jeff and the security guard. But just as it seems he will come out clean, Jeff slips and falls, and Jimmy is in shock. A true version of the prank he has been running since youth may lead to his ruin. He is stuck, knowing that the guard has been conditioned to turn and look at the cameras at that moment. So he must think fast, and the only way he can grab the guard's attention for long enough is by exposing his personally distressing facts. He begins to confess to the sorry nature of his existence, as if the circumstances are attempting to force the truth out of him. He soon walks out once Jeff has escaped, and he is deeply distraught and hyperventilating. We might think he is reacting this way due to almost being caught, but it's just as likely a response to the painful actuality he has been trying to deny for so long. We begin to see how Jimmy is regressing back to his old conning lifestyle, with the scheme on the man with cancer mirroring his past interactions with Walt. In each situation, he is given the opportunity to take the high road, to understand how he is preying on a helpless victim. Even Buddy can't ignore the fact that it is not right to steal the man's identity when he is near death. But Jimmy has no moral compass after building his whole life on falsity. He has failed to develop a sense of right or wrong, and so he convinces himself it's okay to break into the man's house just as it is deemed appropriate to coerce Walt further into the criminal world. As Jimmy is sinking deeper into his facade, Kim has created her own type of persona so as to lessen the sting of her past actions. She is living a stale, commonplace existence in which conversations about mayonnaise are of crucial importance. Meanwhile, starting a relationship with a man who has no interest nor excitement. He is someone who is averse to any type of adventure, a perfect way for Kim to keep herself sheltered from the uncertainty which ramps up her anxiety. In her new home, it's important that she doesn't stand out or appear different, as it will only lead to the stress she is trying to avoid. She has learned to conform to the people and world in which she resides. Just like in childhood, it is best to lie about reality and who she is, so as to maintain stability avoiding all forms of danger and conflict. When Kim finally speaks with Jimmy after years of separation, she points out to him his limited life, but the conversation also reminds her of the lack of life she is living, the way she is a shell of her former self. She finds herself in a black hole with no possibility of progress or forward movement. Kim knows that the only way to come out from the rock she is hiding under is by returning to Albuquerque and providing a confession to the DA and Howard's wife. The severity of her actions are admitted to, leaving no detail spared and spilling everything. She has placed herself in a position of complete vulnerability and exposure, having no control over future events, with the unknown looming large over her head. Cheryl reminds her that she could lose everything, and Kim has accepted that idea. Cheryl then asks bluntly, <sighs> and no answer is given. Perhaps it is because there is no rational explanation for the type of truth that has taken hold of Kim. There is no answer because it is an experience of something which transcends answers and questions. This all might make us ask, why does any person choose to be honest and apologize for past actions even when those choices may jeopardize everything they have? Kim gets back on the bus to the airport and the waterworks accompany her breakdown. Years of suppressing and bottling up her wrongs has finally ceased. The hard journey to find herself has begun, perhaps the hardest thing a person can ever do. She looks like a broken woman, and as she is surrounded by strangers on the bus, we see the numerous ways that she is no longer able to hide behind her mask of lies. And while Kim has made her choice to repent, Jimmy is taking the opposite route towards further deception. Nearly attacking the man with cancer on the stairs, 
before becoming aggressive with Marion in her home. He is battling with the real, trying to stave it off by looking to harm those who threaten to expose him. He has resorted to extreme measures to defend his pseudo ways, willing to kill if need be. But before he can do serious damage, he is found by the police, and his refusal to come clean leaves him dirty and dingy upon his apprehension. But he is so entrenched in his deceptions that it is impossible to let them go. Exampled by his attempts to call the vacuum repairman once again, or by contacting Cinnabon and pretending he is still the responsible store manager. We finally reach Jimmy's courtroom scene, and the stage has been set to see how Jimmy will handle the idea of truth. It's noticeable from the start how Jimmy is overconfident in his act of confessing, certain that he will not commit perjury. He is in complete control of the situation, void of nervousness and uncertainty, unconcerned about the potential results. It contrasts starkly with Kim's confession, one in which she had no control of the fate that could be delivered, where she could not predict the outcome at all. Then when he is sworn in and asked to tell the whole truth, he replies, I do, with a smirk on his face. We are starting to recognize how his comments will not be his saving grace. He has developed a distorted sense of honesty over the years one in which reciting words and saying the story exactly as it happened constitutes truth. It all fits with factual evidence from the past. It may prove to others that he is sorry. It may even correspond to the notion of a confession. But the key component which is missing is the feeling of remorse or guilt that accompanies any type of authentic honesty. After running through his first round of comments, he has looked back to Kim several times and it becomes apparent that her approval and validation of his story is a primary motivating factor. He wants her to believe that he regrets his actions, that he is sorry for the past, but she gives him a cold stare, causing Jimmy to go further with his confession than he originally planned. Meanwhile, Bill argues with the judge as to the validity of Jimmy's statements about the idea of what the truth actually means. It simulates a type of commentary on Jimmy's admission, pointing out the disaccord between what might be considered truth to the court and what truth might mean in the cosmic sense of the word. Jimmy realizes he must discuss Howard and Chuck to please Kim, another way the truth has not been compelled by internal reasons. As he begins his sob story, we begin to recognize how he is now being filmed only through a low angle camera position. Through this technique, we are provided another indication of the way Jimmy holds power and dominance within the scene, never being at risk for truth being revealed. He is in full control of his fate and the minds of the court. When it is all over, Bill provides another commentary on Jimmy's statements by saying, Is this court to impose was, the statutory maximum? That was not a confession. It's a way to indirectly inform us that it was a false type of admission. It was merely a string of comments meant to serve Jimmy's persona, a concoction to manipulate perception and feed his ego needs. He was never at risk of being vulnerable to the court, a far cry from the result of true honesty. The reason we can see this all as a lie is because truth is not something that we have control over. It is not something which we will on our own and use for personal purposes. It is instead something which compels us to participate in its function. Something which often happens to us, despite our wishes against it. It is a force greater than us, which may cause us to admit to things we have tried to deny or hide. The one who participates in truth must accept themselves as a willing sacrifice for the act. There is no logical explanation for the way it operates, as it grips us and places us at odds with the type of person we think we should be. It's as if we all believe we are within truth for much of life, but this is an illusion. It is all Maya. In actuality, the truth must be discovered, and it can only be found if we permit it to reveal itself to us. We must meet it head on and grapple with what it asks of us as it consists of a meeting between opposing forces which must be reconciled. It has nothing to do with our ego, and everything to do with a higher self which resides within us all.
due to Jimmy only being able to operate under his malformed notion of what the truth is, he is never redeemed. There is never any cathartic moment. There are no actual tears or emotions to speak of. It was all for show and appearance, all in service of creating the idea of a guilty looking person. Alternatively, Kim's honesty led her to a different place. It allowed her to start over and volunteer at a center for domestic abuse victims. She was able to put herself back in touch with reality, making a choice that fit her current place in life and ending up somewhere where she can assist others for pure reasons of good, instead of in attempts to satisfy compulsions and unconscious drives. She has made a choice of her own free will, a result of her ability to free herself from falsehood. Jimmy and Kim part ways at the prison, just as they have decided to take separate moral paths. She may play into his game of lies by discussing his ability to manipulate the sentencing, but she is only humoring him, as she knows he cannot see outside his limited view. Instead, Kim is seeing the world of insincerity from an outside perspective, while placing herself firmly in a place of honesty and veracity no longer able to relate to his world of deceptions as she has headed down a road of light and freedom she has experienced a metanoia a change of heart and mind that leads towards newfound vitality there is a wide gulf between them in terms of their commitment to truth kim leaves the prison and heads towards open fields and green pastures while jimmy remains behind metal bars stripped of freedom and trapped within his ever-deepening web of lies. This has been the psychology of Better Call Saul. Please watch my other videos on other TV and film characters if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.